Hi, you can heal family. We are going to be reading today in the book of Leviticus, and I'm glad that you're here to join me during this time with the Lord. My name's Sheena Major, and we're we're growing in Christ. You know, we're getting strengthened, and our faith is getting builded up every time we hear we hear the Bible being read and. And I think that's amazing. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're dedicated to wanting to know more and to wanting to find out what, uh, what Jesus is all about. The Old Testament has a lot going on. <laughs> Today, chapter 12 says laws concerning childbirth. It's not that long. And then um, going into chapter 13, chapter 13 is pretty long. So I'm just going to see how far we get here. And then there's also a little um, article about lepers and leprosy. So why don't we get going and see what the Lord has for us today. Father, open our ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Leviticus chapter 12, laws concerning childbirth. The Lord said to Moses, give these instructions to the Israelites when a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is defiled during her menstrual period. On the eighth day, the boy must be circumcised. Then the woman must wait for 33 days until the time of her purification from the blood of childbirth is completed. During this time of purification, she must not touch anything that is holy, and she must not go to the sanctuary until her time of purification is over. If a woman gives birth to a daughter, she will be ceremonially defiled for two weeks, just as she is defiled during her menstrual period. She must then wait another 66 days to be purified from the blood of childbirth. When the time of purification is completed for either a son or daughter, the woman must bring a year old lamb for a whole burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a purification offering. She must take her offering to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will then present them to the Lord and make atonement for her. Then she will be ceremonially clean again after her bleeding at childbirth. These are the instructions to be followed after the birth of a son or daughter. If a woman cannot afford to bring a sheep, she must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. One will be for the whole burnt offering and the other for the purification offering. The priest will sacrifice them, thus making atonement for her, and she will be ceremonially clean. Well, I've had four babies and <laughs> I didn't have to do any of this, so my goodness. For two weeks after giving birth to a daughter, you're defiled. So, you know, I don't understand why the Lord did it, but he he did. And I'm going to I'm going to trust him. <laughs> And just go with it. I would go for God right here, but I, I'm waiting um, to pick up the little one from preschool. And I went out of the house without my water bottle. So someone go for me. Someone go for me. This is a lot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's start chapter 13. It says, Examination of People. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if some of the people notice a swelling, a rash, or a shiny patch on their skin that develops into a contagious skin disease, they must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons. The priest will then examine the infected area of a person's skin. If the hair is the affected if the hair in the affected area has turned white and appears to be more than skin deep, then it is contagious skin disease. It is a contagious skin disease, and the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. But if the affected area of the skin is white, but does not appear to be more than skin deep, and if the hair in the spot has not turned white, the priest will put the infected person in quarantine for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest will make another examination. If the affected area has not changed or spread on the skin, 
then the priest will put the person in quarantine for seven more days. The priest will examine the skin again on the seventh day. If the affected area has faded and not spread, the priest will pronounce the person ceremonially clean. It was only a temporary rash, so after washing the clothes, the person will be considered free of disease. But if the rash continues to spread after this examination and pronouncement by the priest, the infected person must return to be examined again. If the priest notices that the rash is spread, then he must pronounce this person ceremonially unclean, for it is a contagious disease. So as I'm reading, I'm just thinking about, you know, we're not going to hang out with people who are contagious or who can get us sick. But what about people who are like spiritually sick? Meaning, well, maybe maybe I said that wrong. Or people who aren't as spiritually as far along as we are. Not that we have to be Christian snobs, but just be careful who you hang around with and and watch their behavior, check out their patterns, see what, you know, listen and hear what their conversation is like to make a decision. Is this, a, is this person living clean, right? Is this person living a holy life? I'm all about the holy life. <laughs> is this person living a holy life? And is this someone I want, you know, to regularly be in mind? Because as we've talked about before, you know, the company you keep wears on you and you take on mannerisms and characteristics and traits of another person. So just, you know, seven days seems to be the big number in, in the beginning of this chapter, but just what I'm saying is give it time when you're um, meeting new people and just making sure that they're, they're living the life according to God's will and that you feel good about the company you're keeping. Amen. I'm going to stop there. When I come back, we're going to pick up with uh, Leviticus 13, and we are on chapter 9. Okay, you can heal family. I'm back. We're going to continue reading in Leviticus, starting with chapter, no, chapter 13, verse 9. That's where we left off. Anyone who develops a contagious skin disease must go to the priest for an examination. If the priest sees that some hair has turned white and an open sore appears in the affected area, it is clearly a contagious skin disease and the priest must pronounce that person ceremonially unclean. In such cases, the person need not be quarantined for further observation because it is clear that the skin is defiled by the disease. Now suppose the priest discovers after his examination that a rash has broken out all over someone's skin, covering the body from head to foot. In such cases, the priest must examine the infected person to see if the disease covers the entire body. If it does, he will pronounce the person ceremonially clean because the skin has turned completely white. But if any open sores appear, the infected person will be pronounced ceremonially unclean. The priest must make this pronouncement as soon as he sees an open sore, because open sores indicate the presence of a contagious skin disease. Verse 16, however, if the open sore heals, if the open sores heal and turn white like the rest of the skin, the person must return to the priest. If after any other examination, the infected areas have indeed turned completely white, then the priest will pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. If anyone has had a boil on the skin that has started to heal, but a white swelling or reddish white spot remains in its place, that person must go to the priest to be examined. If the priest finds the disease to be more than skin deep, and if the hair in the infected area has turned white, then the priest must pronounce that the person ceremonially unclean. Must pronounce that person ceremonially unclean. It is a contagious skin disease that has broken out in the boil. But if the priest sees that there is no white hair in the infected area, 
and if it doesn't appear to be more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to put the person in quarantine for seven days. If during that time the infected area spreads on the skin, the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean because it is a contagious skin disease. But if the area grows no larger and does not spread, it is merely the scar from the boil, and the priest will pronounce that person ceremonially clean. If anyone has suffered a burn on the skin and the burn area changed color, becoming either a shiny reddish white or white, then the priest must examine it. If the hair in the affected area turns white and the problem appears to be more than skin deep, a contagious skin disease has broken out in the burn. The priest must then pronounce that person ceremonially unclean for it is clearly a contagious skin disease. But if the person discovers that there is no white hair in the infected area and the problem appears to be no more than skin deep and is faded, then the priest is to, be, is to put the infected person in quarantine for seven days. If at the end of that time, the affected area has spread on the skin, the priest must pronounce that person ceremonially unclean for it is clearly a contagious disease. But if the infected area has not moved or spread on the skin and has faded, it is simply a scar from the burn. The priest must then pronounce the person ceremonially clean. Verse 29. If anyone, whether a man or a woman, has an open sore on the head or chin, the priest must examine the infection. If it appears to be more than skin deep and fine yellow hair is found in the infected area, the priest must pronounce the infected person ceremonially unclean. The infection is a contagious skin disease of the head or chin. However, if the priest's examination reveals that the infection is only skin deep and there is no black hair in the infected area, then he must put the person in quarantine for seven days. If at the end of that time, the affected area has no spread and no yellow hair has appeared, and if the infection does not appear to be more than skin deep, the infected person must shave off all hair except the hair on the infected area. Then the priest must put the person in quarantine for another seven days. And he will examine the infection again on the seventh day. If it has not spread and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest must pronounce that person ceremonially clean. After washing clothes, that person will be clean. But if the infection begins to spread after the person is pronounced clean, the priest must do another examination. If the infection has spread, he must pronounce the infected person ceremonially unclean, even without checking for yellow hair. But if it appears that the infection has stopped spreading and black hair has grown in the infected area, then the infection is healed. The priest will then pronounce the infected person ceremonially clean. If anyone, whether a man or woman, has shiny white patches on the skin, the priest must examine the affected area. If the patch is only a pale white, this is a harmless skin rash and the person is ceremonially clean. If a man loses his hair and his head becomes bald, he is still ceremonially clean. And if he loses hair on his forehead, he simply has a bald forehead. He is still clean. However, if a reddish white infection appears on the front or the back of his head, this is a contagious skin disease. The priest must examine him. And if he finds swelling around the reddish white sore, the man is infected with a contagious skin disease and is unclean. The priest must pronounce him ceremonially unclean. Those who suffer from any contagious skin disease must tear their clothing and allow their hair to hang loose. Then, as they go from place to place, they must cover their mouth and call out, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean and must live in isolation outside the camp. Now, there's one more section in this chapter, and it's called Examination of Clothing. But as I was reading, what was coming to my mind 
Now, let me just say this because this is my own commentary or maybe this is just what's in my head, we should call this. This is what I'm thinking as I'm reading. On this channel, we're, we're learning how to heal from unhealthy relationships and all this clean, unclean business. The priest has to check the infection and be checked seven days in quarantine. For me, I'm thinking this is kind of like that relationship. You want to take the guy back. <laughs> you have to really make sure they're clean. <laughs> like, are they really who they say they are now? Right? I just took my glasses off. Sorry. Are they really who they are claiming to be? And I made this mistake. You know, I asked questions. Are you sure you're not doing this anymore? You're not doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't do that. Oh, yeah. Well, no, because over time in the end, nothing had changed. So we've got to really examine the person's heart, their words, their behavior, their patterns, and really, really take a look at the life they're living and say, is this worth me going back to? You know, and really really giving yourself an opportunity to live in peace and just because let me say this just because someone else wants you back in their life at a particular time or is declaring they want you in their life forever you get an option you get to decide if that's what you want to do you know so when i was reading this you know it, it was very repetitive and it kept saying the priest had to check and examine you know if anything was spreading if there's you know, anything white or this or that, there's all these steps here, you know, and I think that's what we need to really be doing in any relationship, whether it's romantic or not, like, is this person really clean, and clean meaning, are they really who they say they are, right, and if you're, if the person is brand new, and you're looking to start a relationship, you know, check everything out. Look, watch, and listen. Like we're not jumping into anything naive anymore, just because we want to have somebody in our life. We're we're going past that. We love ourselves now. We're loving ourselves. We're becoming who we are, and knowing that we are deserving of the very best, right? And that's what God wants for you, and that's what He wants for me too. So that's my spiel on that, because <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Let's go for God. This is your first time listening to a study with me. Look out for the Lord. We're like deer. We're hungry and thirsty after Jesus. Period. Right? Point blank period. Amen. Let's finish up this chapter. It says examination of clothing. Verse 47. And there are 59 verses in this chapter. So this is a pretty long chapter. Now. Suppose an infectious mildew contaminates some woolen or linen clothing, some woolen or linen fabric, the hide of an animal, or anything made of leather. If the infected area in the clothing, the animal hide, the fabric, or the leather has turned bright green or a reddish color, it is contaminated with an infectious mildew and must be taken to the priest to be examined. After examining the affected spot, the priest will put it away for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must inspect it again. If the infected area has spread, the material is clearly contaminated by an infectious mildew and is unclean. The priest must burn the linen or wool clothing or the piece of leather because it has been contaminated by an infectious mildew. It must be completely destroyed by fire. But if the priest examines it again, and the affected spot has not spread in the clothing, the fabric, or the leather, the priest will order the contaminated object to be washed and then isolated for seven more days. Then the priest must inspect the object again. If he sees that the affected area has not changed appearance after being washed, even if it did not spread, the object is defiled. It must be completely burned up, whether it is contaminated on the inside or outside. But if the priest sees that the affected area has faded after being washed, he is to cut the spot from the clothing, the fabric, or the leather. If the spot reappears at a later time, however, the mildew is clearly spreading and the contaminated object must be burned up. But if the spot disappears after the object is washed, it must be washed again. Then it will be ceremonially clean. 
These are the instructions for dealing with infectious mildew and woolen or linen clothing or fabric or in anything made of leather. This is how the priest will determine whether these things are ceremonially clean or unclean. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, they had no dry cleaner back then, so. <laughs> All right, you can heal family. I was thinking it, so I just said it. That is the end of chapter 13. So we read 12 and 13 today, but I do want to go ahead and read the section on lepers and leprosy. So if you want to hang with me a little longer, we're going to keep going. Amen. Let me know if you made it to the section with leprosy. It said, I made it to the section in the comments. It says here, leprosy, a disease mentioned often in the Bible, sometimes called a contagious skin disease by the New Living Translation, was a dreaded skin affliction in ancient times. Modern medicine has isolated several different types of leprosy, variously characterized by the formation of nodules, ulcers, deformities, and loss of feeling in the skin. In Old Testament times, a symptom used to diagnose the disease was the, was the persistence of shiny white spots under the skin. And we just read about it in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 3 and 4. Some medical experts believe the ancient disease was a severe type of psoriasis or scaling of the skin that is of the skin. My goodness, I said sin, of the skin that is rarely seen today. It was probably more prevalent than Hansen's disease, the term generally used for leprosy today. So that's interesting that the word psoriasis is here. Now, if you have that psoriasis, it settled down. You, you don't, and I don't think it means you have leprosy today. Now it says today leprosy is called Hansen's disease, but I've never, I've never known anybody who had it. All right, let's keep reading. The leper considered to be ceremonially unclean was isolated and forced to live apart from others. Detailed instructions are given in the book of Leviticus on how to recognize leprosy and how others were to be protected from those unfortunate enough to contract the dread disease. The leper was forced to live in isolation outside the camp, required to wear mourning clothes and to cry out, unclean, unclean, to keep others at a safe distance. And we just read that in verses 45 and 46. Several miraculous cures of leprosy are reported in the Bible, both Moses in Exodus chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, and Miriam in Numbers 12, verses 10 and 15, were afflicted with leprosy and cured by the Lord. Oh, Moses and Miriam had leprosy? Well, I need to check that out. So let's just turn back. We read Exodus already, Exodus chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. So let me just take a look. Exodus chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, put your hand inside your robe. Moses did so, and when he took it out again, his hand was white as snow with leprosy. Now put your hand back into your robe again, the Lord said. And Moses did, and when he took it out this time, it was as healthy as the rest of his body. Okay, so the Lord was showing Moses the signs and wonders because Remember, he was calling him to, to lead the Israelites, so he wanted to show him, uh, to show Moses what he could do. So that's interesting. So I don't, I guess he didn't, didn't really have it. I guess he, well, he got it because the Lord gave it to him and then took it away. So that's the power of God, right? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Anything that's going on in your life, that doesn't need to be there or shouldn't be there with God's help you know you can um, you can have oh what's the word I'm looking for victory right you can have victory God will God will help us he's a miracle working God I'll work now mom okay 
So then it says, um, God used the prophet Elijah to heal Naaman, a Syrian military officer of his leprosy in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. In an expression of compassion, Jesus healed 10 lepers, then told them to show yourselves to the priest in Luke 17, 14, for specific instructions on how to re-enter society. One of the lepers returned to express his thanks to Jesus. This miraculous healing of the ten lepers was a clear sign of Jesus' Messiahship, since leprosy was curable only by divine intervention. Now you know I'm turning to Luke now, so we're going to go ahead and read Luke chapter 17, verses 14 through 19, that accounts of this leprosy that can only be cured by divine intervention. Wow. That's amazing. Luke 17. And in Luke, I'm trusting that you're having a great day. As I make my way there. Okay, Luke 17. Starting at verse 14. Christ heals 10 lepers. Well, let's start at 11. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village, there ten leopards stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, could you imagine being one of those ten leopards? And here comes Jesus, and you know he has the power to heal you. And they're screaming for him, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, their leprosy disappeared. So Jesus just spoke, go and show yourselves. And by faith, they started walking and the leprosy disappeared. So this is a good example. As long as we go toward um, help, right? As long as we move and obey and try, you know, let's just look at this practically. There's something you have or you're desiring or want or don't know how to do or help get help with God saying just go toward me like leading you just try and I'll make everything all right I'm just talking to myself there but because as they went the leprosy disappeared and I know when God shows me something and when I start to move and do it and try even if I don't know everything or how to do something I begin to get clarity you know clear, like the leprosy skin cleared up, I begin to get clear. I begin to get insight. And then the next, God will open up the next thing that he needs to show me to do. And that's how we get things done. We never know how things, the result, the end result, (laughs) that'd be too easy, right? He wants us to walk and move faithfully. Verse 15 says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God, I'm healed. He fell face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only this foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Now see that? There were ten of them. One came back given glory to God for what God did. God wants to get the glory. God wants to get the glory for the things we do. So we can't say, oh, look what I did. I did this. God wants the glory. Oh, yeah. That's why when you're building, so now I'm thinking when you're building something, working on your dream, everything's got to be done decent in order. So not, not so everybody looks at you, but everybody looks at the work you're accomplishing and saying, there must be a God. There must be a God through your life. Like we see, we can see that God did this and give God the glory. Oh, yeah. We got to give God the glory. Because Jesus said in verse 18, does only this foreigner return to give God glory? So God wants us to give him the glory because why would he say that, right? Why would he put it there? Are you the only one who came back to give me glory for what I've done for you in your life? Oh, my goodness. 
oh my goodness so that's that's that you guys we're gonna stop there so I, I i got some things out of this reading and i hope um you did too let me know what you heard and what the spirit said to you and and i trust that the things i said uh, weren't confusing and they made sense and and god will uh, give you understanding there too but that was fun right the word of god is good and fun and helps us I want you to be completely proud of yourself whether this is your first study with me or you've been studying with me all along since we started Genesis in the Old Testament and I just kind of want you if you don't have your Bible right now near you just pick it up and flip through all the pages we read from Exodus up to um, the end of Leviticus chapter 13 and you know not many people can say they've done that so praise the Lord, right, for your um, consistency in coming back and listening and your dedication to hearing all the Word of God. I think that's pretty amazing, and I'm glad that I'm able to uh, be with you on your journey to, to reading the whole entire Bible. We're going to do it. <laughs> We're going to do it. We really will. Okay, you can heal family. I love you so much. Always remember, true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Oh, God, soon. Bye.